I'm very thankful to have my family and friends here today. Uh, I stand here in God's house in front of every single one of you and tell you I spent three years in prison for a crime I didn't commit. There was a moment after I was sentenced when the judge, knowing I was innocent, having his hands tied by ignorant choices of mine, asked me how I felt. My answer was right guy, wrong crime. Paul writes in 1 Timothy 1.15, this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. This is my favorite verse of the Bible and one that truly feels like it was written for me. I am the worst of the worst. I wasn't just a heroin addict. I was a junkie who took his grandma to church on Sundays and Bible studies on Wednesdays. I was a wolf in sheep's clothing. I was lying, using drugs, and dealing drugs. I didn't care about anything other than making sure I had drugs and a way to get more drugs. <clears throat> I was a heroin addict who knew of Christ's love and the power of his grace, yet still chose evil and destruction. Growing up, I went to church and vacation Bible schools in the summer. I was in fellowship of Christian athletes in high school. I also was the life of the party. I was always duplicitous, even though I didn't know it at the time. My destruction came, as they say, very slow at first and then all at once. Years of my life being wasted, being a drug addict. I knew deep in my heart what I was doing was wrong and was just too much of a coward to stop it. I went to prison for something I didn't do, but I'm not an innocent man. And as far as my prison experience, God is good. Being good doesn't necessarily mean things were easy. Spending three years in prison away from everyone you love, unable to hug anyone you love, and having to fight to use a telephone. Let me tell you, there were plenty of dark days, but the absolute truth is God is so good. I was in a place I didn't belong, around people I didn't know, and I can't begin to tell you how little I fit in. But I was never alone. The darkest day of that three years was the day my dad passed away. I was still clinging to a toxic relationship, and I called that day, found out he passed, and that was the last time I had a phone call answered. God had again stepped in to do what I was too much of a coward to do. I met a man who God had done great work in. He walked me through discipleship. I went from reading five chapters a day thinking I was doing something, and he taught me to read one verse and really dissect it. He helped me learn to worship and about truly having a relationship with Christ. I was learning what being a Christian was really about. I learned so much through the word, through how someone else sees the word. He asked me when I was saved, and I said, I don't know. I've always believed in Christ, but I've never had that moment. He said, today is the day. And in the middle of a prison yard, we stood and I officially accepted Christ into my life. <clears throat> While in prison, I also joined a group that was started by an amazing man of God. Standing right there. He's got a haircut just like me. Uh, this amazing man, he volunteers at prison and his better half. By far his better half. <laughs> but the goal of the group was to take men who were mainly gang leaders and violent offenders and introduce them to Christ. These were already leaders on the compound, and we watched Christian videos and listened to Christian music. But mostly, we had very authentic conversations and solved conflicts. Kent led by example and touched so many lives who had never been stepped foot in a church. I will be forever grateful for those moments, and I'm sure you're very mad at me for saying that. I have now been out for a little more than two years. I started out on an RTA bus working terrible jobs. Now I have a stable life, the best job I've ever had, amazing girlfriend and little boy who are my absolute world. And all I can say is I deserve none of it. None of it is because of me. It is only because God is good. Thank you for your time. Oh, man. Uh, Jake, you know, I, Jake is a guy that has been coming for quite some time, uh, several months now. And, uh, and I've only ever known him through a connection card because I can't, he ducks out quick. And one Sunday, I was leaving, and he was right in front of me, head down, heading for the doors. And, uh, and, and we had never met. I'm like, hey, Jake! And, uh, and so uh, we started getting acquainted, whether he wanted to or not. We started getting acquainted. And, but, uh, man, I'm so glad. What God, I'm just so thankful to hear what God has been doing in your life and, um, and what he has done in your life. And, uh, and, and, I, and I get from you the spirit that I get the, just coming from you is you desire to know Jesus. You have a heart that is soft to that soften toward the things of Jesus. You want your life to be made known for the glory of God. And, and uh, these are the things that I know you're always asking prayer for, um, that, that God would make himself known through you. 
And, uh, and I thank God for that. And I uh, thank God for, for your testimony and what God has done in your life. And so I would ask you, Jake, do you receive Jesus as your Savior who came and lived and died in your place? Yes, sir. And do you receive Jesus as your king? He is the one who is the rightful king to lead your life for his glory. Yes, sir. And do you receive Jesus as your treasure, the one who is worth, worth abandoning it all for? He is worth more than anything on this earth. So, Jake, based upon that profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.